state of a quantum system is described by a state vector psi from a complex vector state space S. The time evolution of the state vector psi is governed by the Schrödinger's equation. Schrödinger's equation allows us to calculate psi of t if we know psi of t0. Knowing the time evolution of a quantum system resumes to knowing the Hamiltonian and an initial condition. The initial condition is obtained by measuring an observable of the system. An observable is a Hermitian operator O on the state space S. By measuring an observable O0, we find psi of T0 to be an eigenstate of O0. In general, one observation is enough to establish which solution of the Schrödinger's equation represents the quantum system, but two or more observations may be too many because they may be incompatible. It seems that it must exist a discontinuity, the wave function collapse, in the time evolution of a quantum system. The delayed choice experiments indicate that the discontinuous jump anticipates the choice of the observable to be measured. Hence, the observations impose delayed initial conditions. The probability to obtain a given possible outcome of the measurement is predicted by the Bohn's rule. The discontinuity is a scar on the face of quantum mechanics because it is mathematically inelegant, there is no direct evidence supporting it, it should break the conservation laws which are consequences of the unitary evolution but magically it doesn't break them. I will show now that we don't need the discontinuities. Simplest case, we measure the quantum system for the first time. The state of the quantum system prior to the initial measurement is not determined. After the first measurement, an initial condition is stated and the state is determined without discontinuities. The measurement device being specified only macroscopically, we can assume that its quantum state is not completely determined, so that it depends on some free parameters. The measurement means interaction with the observed system, which means that its Hamiltonian is modified in a way dependent on the free parameters of the measurement device. After the first measurement, the quantum system gets entangled with the subsystem omega zero of the first measurement device having a state space S0. Accordingly, the combined system omega zero and psi is a vector of the tensor product between S0 and S. Therefore, for each possible outcome of a new measurement performed to psi, a corresponding state is found for omega zero. Since the evolution is deterministic, it follows that the outcome psi of t1 determines not only omega zero of t1, but its past two. Example, the Mach Zender experiment. If the photon goes on one way, the half-silver mirror is in one state. If it goes the other way, the half-silver mirror is in another state. And if it goes both ways, the half-silver mirror is in a superposition of the two states. We can see that the mirror state and its path is determined by the outcome of the measurement. Determining the unknown parameters for the past is nothing but another example of delayed initial conditions. The same mechanism repeats with each new measurement. In conclusion, we can do a quantum mechanics free of discontinuities in the time evolution. Smooth quantum mechanics.